Dear God, we pray for your Holy Spirit on this Pentecost Sunday to come upon your church. Blow in us and take us wherever you want. In your name we pray. Amen. Pentecost. 50 days. That's what the word means. 50 days after Passover, 50 days after the crucifixion and resurrection of the Lord, the disciples were against all odds, they were sticking together. Initially they thought that each of them would go back to Galilee and pick up their nests again and go back to fishing. But somehow, they decided to stick together as the small group they were. And uh, they committed themselves to um, the reading of the scriptures and the praying together in the upper room, the same place where they had had the last meal with Jesus, uh, the Passover meal. They decided to believe the word of God. Jesus for 40 days had been showing up amongst them and telling them, if you stay together, if you don't give up, if you stay in Jerusalem, the Holy Spirit that I promised you will come to you and you will receive power and you will be my witnesses. You will be throughout the earth proclaiming the good news. And guess what? The disciples decided to stick together to pray and read the Bible together as the small group they were, and boom! <laughs> I don't mean to scare you, but that's what happened on Pentecost. There was uh, the sound of a uh, mighty wind descending upon those gathered together uh, in the upper room on that Sunday morning, and they were all looking like drunk people. Uh, that's what those were who heard the sound and were coming to see what was going on. That's what they thought. All of them, all of these are full of alcohol, uh, but they were not. They were full of the Holy Spirit, but they were acting in unexpected ways because the Holy Spirit was moving them. Now, fast forward uh, 1,000 738 years later, or so, and uh, you have another small group, a group of young students at Oxford University, a very strict, imagine, British education. Um, I was there, Isel and I, we were, we were, we were there, um, and uh, boy, it, 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 that's feel very stiff. Uh, because there are rules and there are disciplines and things that you have to do. But a group of students decided that they would not comport themselves to the schedule. And they will make room to get together. Now listen to this. They called themselves the Holy Club. Can you think of the most apparently arrogant title? <laughs> for a small group to call themselves the Holy Club. But they were serious about holiness. And holiness became the trademark of the United Methodist Church. When this small group in Oxford University decided to take the commandments of the Bible seriously, and they said, we have to go back to the basics. So they wanted to read the Bible, pray, visit with the sick, visit with those in prison, go and set the captives free. And uh, John Wesley, leading this group with his brother Charles Wesley and others who were there as part of the Holy Club, um, they received also the mighty wound of the Holy Spirit. And today, it so happens that we remember three important things in the life of Christianity and our nation. Memorial Day, Pentecost, and Aldersgate. 
Aldous Gate was the name of the street when, uh, uh, where John Wesley, on May 24th, 1738, was gathered as a small group. It was not a um, worship on Sunday morning. It was, again, a small group that decided to get together to read the Bible, study, and pray together. And the Holy Spirit came upon those there, especially upon John Wesley, and he felt his heart warm in a very special way. And uh, from then on, his life was completely different. This is what he got that day, he says, when he writes down on his diary that day. I felt that my sins were forgiven. Imagine John Wesley, as after having been a pastor for a few years, after having been a missionary in the 13 colonies in Georgia, Saint Simon Island, a place we can all visit, maybe we can all go there. It's not far away from here. After having been a missionary, then he says, I know now that God has forgiven my sins. Because he thought before that day that he had to do something, work out his salvation through action. And then he realized through teaching, through hanging out together in small groups with the Moravians and all the Christians, he read in the scriptures that our sins are forgiven just freely by grace, by an action of the Holy Spirit, by Jesus who died on, on the cross, and by the Holy Spirit coming and giving testimony with our own spirit, to our heart, to our whole beings, that we are truly children of God just by accepting Jesus by faith. And that's how um, the Methodist Church was born. This group, this uh, Holy Club, that's the name they gave for themselves. Um, those outside of the group called them mocking me. The Methodists. So did you know that, that uh, we are Methodists just because that was the name we were called? And what was the method? The main item of that method was to get together a small group. And John Wesley created a church of small groups. This is one phrase that we read in uh, Jim Hunnish's book, You Only Have to Die. A book we have been reading. And a week from today, Jim Harnish will be in our pulpit on Sunday, and uh, on Saturday he will be in the fellowship hall to talk to all of us who want to go and hang out with him and uh, learn from him how a church can be transformed. So we read this week a powerful phrase in his book, "You Only Have to Die." He said, "We cannot be a church with small groups." We have to be a church of small groups. Not with small groups, but a church where everybody is plugged in, connected, connected to one another through small groups. It's very hard for the Holy Spirit to move if everything we do is scripted, as usually happens during Sunday worship service. We have to make room for the Holy Spirit to move even within worship service. If you feel like you want to raise up your hands and uh, praise God, uh, you have freedom to do that in the Holy Spirit. When the Spirit moves, nothing is scripted. You are like a wind, excuse me, like a leaf. Or, this is an image I love from um, uh, God, uh, God, the name of the Forest God. Forest God. Thank you very much. You knew what I was talking about. Maybe you have that image in your, in your minds. That uh, feather being moved, blowing around, taken by the Holy Spirit or by the wind, and finally resting 
in a place that only God knew what it was. What it was. That's what happened to the Methodist church. God took the church and they never knew where they were going to go. God was leading all the way through and they didn't know the next step. How wonderful. Not to know the next step. It makes some of us feel nervous. It makes me feel nervous. <laughs> I want to know uh, everything that's going to happen in the service. Uh, and sometimes I get a little uh, obnoxious. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> and it says, agreed. <laughs> because, you know, some prices uh, are not always welcome. But when the Holy Spirit is moving, some things unexpected uh, happen. And we'll have to be open to that. So that's, that's what, that, that was the, the movement of the Methodist societies. Every day they had to come together and talk and talk and talk. What are we going to do next and next and next? Because you couldn't plan long French. And John Wesley did. But he also learned to be flexible and to adapt along the way. Now, fast forward from uh, uh, 1738, fast forward a few hundred years, and another group came up with a very righteous name, uh, the Ten Brave Christians. Have you heard about it? The Ten Brave Christians, the small group that came in our church under the leadership of Reverend Dan Morris, our founding pastor. We remember him with so much <coughs> I wish I had met him. He's still alive, thank God, uh, all the way in Tennessee, uh, Tennessee. I wish I could take a trip to meet him, but one day I will meet him and express, we all will express our gratitude to him and to Sam T the creators of the Ten Great Christians. Can you think of a more, more, a more self-righteous title? <laughs> Some still today are, are scared of calling themselves brave, brave Christians. And that's why they came up with another name, uh, the John Wesley Great Experiment. And what was the experiment? Just the same thing that the church had done for many years. Get together in small groups to read the Bible, pray for one another, witness to others about the love of Christ in their life, give the tithe to the Lord, and volunteer in your church. The same thing that John Wesley did. Volunteer. Take time to do something for God. And um, that is how our church was born. Both our universal church in Pentecost, the Methodist church in Aldersgate, and that's how our church grew up and became uh, the strong church uh, that we still are, and that we will be, and that we will continue to be if, if we let the Holy Spirit to come and take us and uh, move us like that, lead or fed in. Uh, and God's mighty, mighty and powerful wound and take us if, if we are, again, a church of small groups. So Romans chapter 8, we chose that verse because this was uh, the text that changed John Wesley's life. That day in August 8, May 24th, 1738, they were reading from that letter to the Romans, how God with the Holy Spirit can change our hearts. And in this text, this powerful text, it says, it would be very well summarized by the title of Jim Harnish's book, You Only Have to Die. You Only Have to Die. Because it says right there, uh, chapter 8, um, verses uh, 16, 17, it says, uh, we die, therefore, brothers and sisters, we have an obligation. It is not to the flesh to live according to it, because if you live according to the flesh, you will die. So we need to die to the flesh. 
If you live, if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of our sinful nature, you shall live. John Wesley would say, "You shall live abundantly." This was from eight, verse twelve. Chapter 8, verse 12. And then um, Paul continues to say, um, those who are led by the Holy Spirit, those are the children of God. This is from verse 16. Those who, that the Holy Spirit testifies within our spirit that we are God's children. Now if we are children, we are truly heirs of the Lord. We are co-heirs. All the blessings that Jesus received. Paul says we are co-heirs. Co-heirs with Jesus. And only those who are led by the Holy Spirit, those are the children of God. That is from chapter 8, verse 14. Those of you who I see have your Bibles in your hands. Chapter 8, verse 14. Those who are led by the Spirit of God, those are the children of God. So today as we celebrate Pentecost, Altar Gate, and Memorial Day, I have prayer before God that our church will be led by the Holy Spirit, that my life will be led by the Holy Spirit. Are you willing to do that? No, you're not. <laughs> I am not either. <laughs> My spirit is ready. My flesh, maybe not so much. Because when the Holy Spirit comes and takes you, you're led to places where you didn't think you would come. And some of them can be scary places. Some of them can be new places. Things that you used to dislike, things that you might think that you would never do, the Holy Spirit might lead you to do them. I remember so well our uh, pianist in one of my previous churches. I think I've said this story once before. She was a very strict person. She wanted to have everything planned. And uh, I could not do anything in the church out of the script. Probably that turned me to the bachelor that I am when I went to do everything by the group. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember one day in our church that uh, we were singing, I fly away one day. Oh, I fly away. Fly away. Yeah, thank you, Mark. <laughs> And somehow the Holy Spirit fell upon her. And I remember her behind the piano. Now Martha is completely unlike her, because Martha is unscripted. But <laughs> we were singing our fly away, and she stood up and began to clap and dance as we were singing, I will fly away. And I look back and I, and I see Nancy, uh, Nan, uh, um, blanking on her last name, right now. That, uh, I know she's happy and she's dancing right now in campus. Because I saw her dancing there, happy and joyful. In a few days she had a completely unexpected aneurysm. And she basically fell dead on the spot with a ruptured uh, artery. And, uh, and I will tell you she went straight to heaven. We were on faith. We were on, uh, on fair to her. Um, sometimes we were uncomfortable that she was so strict that we were unfair to her. That was her personality, and that didn't mean that she did not feel the Holy Spirit. And she taught us all the lesson that uh, you never know what's going on inside a person's heart. And she was full of the Holy Spirit, and she showed us by moving and dancing and by being completely unscripted that, that she was a child of God. And my brother and sister. I invite you today to become either a feather or a sleep a lady in the in the hands and the powerful hands of God. It might be scary. 
Gladys, every, every day when I come to church after reading with this cause, you only have to die in our study group. And then next day she, she comes and she asks me, are you sure that you're ready for this? <laughs> because when the Holy Spirit comes, you don't know what's going to happen. Well, I am more than ready. And I want you to be the surprise. I want you to come and tell me, Pastor, I want to do this and I want to do that. And, and I, I want the Holy Spirit to uh, be moving in this church. It is only going to happen if we go back to the basics. Get together in small groups. Um, pray, read the Bible. Hang out with each other. Hang out with each other. And have this prayer before God. As John Wesley did, he was not satisfied with the spiritual level of his life to God. And he said, John Wesley said, I know that there is more for me. And he found that just by hanging out together with other Christians, by persevering when life was tough, when he was only part of a very small group that was doing that, and all the others, even Christians, were mocking him and calling him, you're a Methodist. But by persevering, by handing down, uh, hanging, hanging up with other Christians and uh, reading the Bible, God took our church and our world into a place we never knew who would be. And here we are with the whole world and history waiting for us to be those Christians that God can use because we are God's mighty and powerful hands. Let's pray. Dear God, John Wesley, United Methodist Church, wants to be that feather that the, that powerful flower that gives itself up for you so that you take it. That seed that is taken up in the wings of birds away from the tree, but is replanted again in a new place and gives, and gives birth to new life. That seed, that feather, that leaf that gives itself up in your hands for you, that's what we want to do. Lead us in your name we pray. Amen.